bunch of gamers, one channel, and tons of games. This must be Games and Me. Hey guys, welcome to the Review Club, and we're back from a long vacation or two from E3. My foot is completely sore from that show, and so I had to like go to you know real work with sandals and stuff and a bandage. So, like, because apparently, like, I have a potential fracture in my toe. Awesome. So <laughs> let's go and introduce everybody who's going to be in the group today, starting with CK. So, what have you been playing, sir? Well, Phoenix Wright, uh, Phoenix Wright, and there's this game on the DS called Phoenix Wright that I've been playing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so we also have Vanessa. What have you been playing? Uh, can you guess? Phoenix Wright. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. And I've been trying to keep up with uh, EA Sports Active also. Nice. Cool. And of course, we have Chris. Uh, I just bought a couple of uh, DS games, so I actually got three of them, three used games. I got a uh, Puzzle Quest Galactrix, Puzzle Quest Challenge, and I bought Phoenix Wright. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually I got you. I, wow. I, I got the first. I just finished the first case, but other than that, I've been playing Puzzle Quest Galactrix. Wow, incredible. Well, guess who wasn't playing Phoenix, right? That was me. What I've been actually been playing is... Um, actually, I've been playing two games. I've been playing Infamous and Prototype, because I want to review Prototype today, and I think, Chris, you're reviewing Infamous today. Yeah. Right, so that's going to be very, very interesting. And also, I wanted to also include star ocean till the end of time because a lot of people kept telling me that it's a good rpg and some of them were telling me it's a terrible rpg so guess what i'm just gonna play it and find out for myself and so far it's not a bad rpg although i have to say that for something completely sci-fi the first area that i was in was filled with skeleton knights like in in a medieval dungeon that kind of confused me so i think we'll move on from there so for this first review, I think I'm going to ask Vanessa to preface this whole thing. So why don't you start it off? All right, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. It's the very first game that came out. And it came out in 2001, which is, wow, a lot longer ago than I thought. But we've all been playing the DS version that I think came out in 2005. And... Um, so it's the same game, but it has an extra case tacked onto the end. And when I first heard of Phoenix Wright, it was like, you know, it got really popular with the fans, and I saw it everywhere, and all I could think of was, oh, jeez, it's another one of these stupid fan games, and oh my gosh, it's so dumb. But now that I've played it, I totally know why there are crazy fans, and... I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I'm definitely going to play all of them eventually. <laughs> That's cool. So, CK, do you want to uh, jump into the nitty-gritty of the gameplay? Because, you know, as as anyone would, you know, who is a first-time player for Phoenix Wright, they're going to be really confused as to how the game is played. So, Yeah, because it's not quite an adventure game in the purest sense, but it's also not quite a digital novel either. It's kind of a happy medium in between. It's a very linear game, like a digital novel. Uh, it just basically goes from start to finish in the life of this, uh, I guess you just call him a rookie lawyer, and the crazy cases he has. It, it's divided into two segments. There are the uh, investigation portions, where Phoenix is, I guess, hunting around the crime scene, looking for evidence and witnesses that will testify and... 
you're generally just hunting for clues. This is the part that's a lot like an adventure game because you're examining stuff and trying to find uh, hot objects. And then there are the court scenes, which are the real, which are the really exciting uh, scenes because basically you're in court and <laughs> you have to uh, take a uh, witness testimony and then find the contradictions in there based off of what you know about the case so far. Now, that may sound dry and boring, and believe me, when I first played this, I was absolutely not interested because I'm just one of those people who never got into legal dramas. Like, I don't <laughs> like Law & Order. I don't know why it's still on the air. I don't find CSI interesting. It's like, none of that. But there's just something about the tension and the characters in this game that just really sucks you in and like is just chock full of these moments where you just go oh my god and then you like want to throw your ds across the room because you're just like how could you do that <laughs> but <laughs> anyway okay. it's uh quite entertaining uh you just have to accept that it's even less non-linear than a traditional adventure game because you're basically just taking a story from start to finish and then trying to find the contradictions and testimonies and then finding stuff along a very clear path of breadcrumbs mm -hmm. so chris since you're starting off in this game like what what it, what's the first impression you got from the game that nothing was realistic about it. <laughs> that it, it's got no real legal, uh, legal. Um, I don't know what I don't legal know what basis. Or yeah, anything? Not, not really basis, but legal uh, procedures in it or anything. Or I guess they just depending on where they are, they do things differently. But well, yeah, I mean, um, just to kind of preface this, like you know, preface that whole legal system. This is based off of. Um, you know, the Japanese legal system, which is basically, like, guilty until proven yeah, innocent. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's not, right. it's not the opposite of the American judiciary system. Yeah. Another thing I found unrealistic is that they have a conversation in the game about how prosecutors are evil, horrible <laughs> people who all they want to do is throw innocent people in jail, and defendants are just saving innocent people who never did the crime, and oh my gosh, there's, like, so good and evil, but it's, like, totally unrealistic, because what if Phoenix Wright is, like, defending someone who really is guilty? That's true. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a very good point, and I thought about that as I was playing this game, especially the last case, which is based very heavily on the idea that prosecutors are supposedly evil, <laughs> and it's up to the good, innocent, virginal defense attorney to set things right. <laughs> no yeah. pun intended. <laughs> Speaking of virginal, did you guys notice that there's a lot of gay overtones in some of the jokes in this oh, game? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I got that far in the game to notice it. Not well, yet. Not yet. Yeah, okay. not yet. So. Well, it's really interesting to hear your opinion, Chris, because I think I can completely explain why CK and I love this game, and it is because it's completely plot and character driven. I think it's completely story and completely character development. And those are my two number one things that I look for in a game. So Although you're I... obviously recommending this to story gamers there, oh, right? Of course. Agreed. Although I do have to agree with Chris that at first the characters do seem very unrealistic and it was to the point where it was actually starting to turn me off i guess because i was coming from broken sword where the game makes a lot of strives to present realistic and fleshed out characters but the thing is about this game as it goes on you, i don't know it's like you're playing a jrpg those characters are really stock and don't necessarily have anything special or original about them, but there's just something sometimes about these stock video game characters. There's a reason they use them, and it's if the character is made entertaining and lovable enough that you actually get very absorbed in a way that perhaps you don't with a game that strives to have characters as realistic as possible, if that makes sense. Yeah. I I mean, I kind of mirror the, the whole idea behind their concept of Phoenix, right, with the notion of, you know, like one of my favorite animes of all time, Great Teacher Onizuka. It's like you put like the, you know, the most unlikeliest person who can ever be in that position whatsoever 
and you have him encounter all these challenges, it's like you're kind of curious as to how he's going to overcome all of this. And in, in the same way, like Phoenix Wright is kind of like your most unlikeliest ace attorney. Of course, he's not an he doesn't consider himself as an ace attorney the entire game yet. But, you know, it's kind of like you like kind of playing his career, like how he wound up like with that sort of title, you know? Well, the thing that I'm trying to get at with the story and characters is that they're completely intertwined in the sense that the story goes on kind of as you would expect it. And then there are these incredible plot twists that they have. Like uh, there was a point at which I was playing when CK was 